Hi, this is David Harper of Bionic Turtle. I wanted to briefly illustrate the Taylor series approximation. This is a very important idea for the financial risk manager because it is applied across asset classes and at the portfolio level, but it's also a difficult idea because it starts with calculus. So I'd like to illustrate it here without the calculus by using a single stock option instrument. And the metaphor will be the idea could also apply to a portfolio. But so if we start with a stock option, I'm going to need six inputs to price the stock option with the Black Scholes option pricing model. And those are a stock price, I assume $50, a strike or exercise price, I will assume $50. I'm going to assume a volatility of 30%, that's the annualized standard deviation. And then here I've got the variance, which is just the square root of that. It's not an input because it's solved directly off the volatility. We can talk about volatility and variance almost synonymously. Then I have the riskless or risk-free rate. I'll assume 4%. I need a contractual term on this option. One here means I'm assuming one year. And finally, a dividend yield. I'm going to assume 0%, so I am pricing a European call option on a non-dividend paying stock. I have six inputs. That means I can use the Black-Scholes option pricing model to price the value of a call option on this stock that has a price of $50. However, the one thing I want to do to illustrate the Taylor series is I want to make, I want to shock two of the inputs and specifically I want to shock or adjust the stock price by one dollar so that's plus one to fifty one dollars and then I'm going to shock the volatility plus two percent to thirty two percent so what I have here in the adjusted column is simply the same set of inputs but I've shocked two of the inputs to change them so I have a second set and then I'm going to price both stock options so here in the first column if we come down here to the blue, this is just an application of the Black-Scholes option pricing model. I'm not going to go into detail here on that. If you know anything about the Black-Scholes, you know I need to calculate D1 and use the standard normal cumulative distribution. But here I'm just applying the Black-Scholes option pricing model. I get $6.88. That's the produced option value on a European call option with these inputs up here. $6.88. Also, I'm going to price the adjusted option. That's that same option except I only changed the stock price and I shocked the volatility up. And here, this option has a higher stock price and a slightly higher volatility, so we would expect it to have more value and it does. The Black-Scholes option pricing model tells us the value of this option is $7.88. Note it's $1 greater. Now, this is just a stock option, but if you think from a risk manager perspective, think about this in terms of portfolio, because I can use the Taylor series approximation on a portfolio, and whereas I have shocked the inputs up here, volatility and stock, you can also think about this as I've shocked the underlying risk factors, because the value of this option has a nonlinear relationship with its underlying inputs. And so we could also, the metaphor is, the value of the portfolio has a non-linear relationship to the underlying risk factors. So really what I'm doing, another way to look at this is, I'm shocking risk factors. And now we can start to see what the Taylor series approximation can do for us. Because remember right here I did a full repricing. I repriced the adjusted option. But the Taylor series approximation is going to allow me to estimate or approximate the change without doing a full repricing and only directly referencing the changed factors. So it gives me a shortcut and the price of that shortcut is I get an estimate, an approximation. But I get a pretty good approximation. So what I need for the approximation is I need some of the Greeks. I need these first order partial derivatives delta 
which is the first order partial derivative. It's the change in the call option, the small change given a small change in the stock price. I need delta because I shocked the stock price. I'm also going to grab gamma as another Greek, which is the second order partial derivative, sensitivity of the call option with respect to the stock. It's also the first derivative of the delta. So gamma is a function also of stock price. I'm also going to pull vega because that's the change in the call option or the small change in the call option given a small change in the volatility. I need vega because I shocked the volatility. So you can see I'm pulling three Greeks, two because I shocked the stock price, one because I shocked the volatility. So I solve for the Greeks here in green and then those become inputs into the Taylor series approximation. So I'll go down just to that part of the sheet. And first, all I'm doing is pulling these values down. So these are values we already saw. There's the stock price change. I added a dollar. My new stock is 51. Here's my volatility shock plus 2%. My new volatility is 32%. Then in red, here, what I'm doing is I'm implementing the Taylor series approximation. And that formula here, I've copied right here, and I'm, I just happen to be using Jorian's notation from his, uh, the fourth edition handbook for the FRM. So you see different notations here. But this formula here is pretty close to what I'm doing here. The only difference is this formula doesn't, uh, doesn't explicitly include the volatility, so it's just another term. But all I've got is the function of x, x that means that's the value of my new call option. It's going to be approximated by the value of my old call option plus the approximate change, where that change is a function of a first order partial derivative delta multiplied by the change in the stock price. And then here is the term for gamma, my second order partial derivative. So I've got the change in stock, the delta, the gamma, the change in volatility. I'm using vega. And here's my truncated Taylor series. I'll hit function 2 just to edit it. And it's a little hard to see how these are similar, but they really are because my truncated Taylor series is simply the change in stock multiplied by the delta. So that's the $1 increase in stock here multiplied by delta. And that, and that term is right here. Then I go to the next term and see I've got the plus 0.5 plus all of this. That's this term right here. Here's the 0.5. I multiply by gamma right here. I multiply by the change in the stock price right here. And I raise it to the second power squared. So that's the term for the gamma. And then finally, I've got the change in volatility multiplied by the vega. So I've got three terms in here, but the point is I'm simply multiplying the changes in the inputs by those Greeks or those sensitivities. If I hit enter, I get one dollar and one penny. That's my Taylor series approximation. It's telling me if I function directly off just the changes in the inputs, I'm estimating a change in the value of the call option of a dollar, which gets me to seven from 688 to 788. You'll recall that's almost exactly what I got with the full repricing. And, and down here is my comparison. Actual price, full repricing of the Black Shoals, and the second value using the Taylor series approximation, or actually I truncated it because it goes on and on and on, in the truncated form, it's a delta gamma approximation, and I got $7.884. And the difference, you can't even see to three decimal, place, decimal places. That's how close the Taylor series approximation was. So I hope this was helpful. This is David Harper, the Bionic Turtle. Thanks for your time.